In this video, I will explain you star schema, snowflake schema, fact and dimension table as if you are a five year old child. Here I'm showing you a simple database of grocery store transaction. Now I'm showing these transactions in Excel file, but these transactions could be stored in a relational database such as MySQL or Oracle. And these transactions represent the daily sales which is happening in a grocery store where people come, they buy, potatoes, broccoli, banana, and so on. And they make payment. There is information on customer and so on. Now, one thing you will notice here is all the information about a transaction is stored in a single table. So this is highly denormalized database. What denormalized database means is everything is stored in a single row. But if you have worked with relational databases, usually people use this concept of normalization where they will store redundant information into a, a separate table. And the reason they do that is just notice this. Here, there is information about customer Peter Pandey and that information is being repeated. So if I store Peter Pandey's name, email, customer address in that same record, I'll have to repeat that information. So number one problem is there is a lot of data duplication. Tomorrow, if Peter's address changes, then I'll have to update four records and there could be an issue with data consistency. So what usually people do is they create a separate table called customers. So here I'm showing that as a separate sheet in this Excel file and they will store uh, only customer specific information. So customer name, email, address, and so on. And then they assign a customer ID to it. So here 401 is the ID. Similarly for item, let's say broccoli, banana, they will store that in a separate table. Okay, so there is item name, category, price, and there is item ID. See, these IDs are very important. So let's say there is item ID 21 customer 401. Now you create this sales table where you just store those IDs. So here in this table 401 means uh, our Peter Pandey sir, 21 is potato, broccoli, whatever. And there is order weight here. Now you see the benefit here in these four records, you stored only 401. Previously in these four records, you had to store all the information. So here, the data usage is optimized and tomorrow if you change address of Peter Pandey, you just change it here and it will get reflected here and you join this table using SQL joins and, and so on. Same thing you do it with transaction. Okay, so transaction, let's say there is this date, you can create a separate date table where you can have information such as whether the it's a weekday or versus weekend because you might want to do analytics such as what are my sales on weekend versus weekday. So you can store all the metadata such as fiscal year, quarter, a lot of information about that date in a separate table. Due to this, what happens is you have your sales table in the middle and then on the side, you have all your dimension table. So in the middle, you have sales or transaction table. It is called fact table on the side, whatever you have is called dimension table because it is storing an extra information about that sales transaction. Okay, so here I have shown all the fields and by the way, our database is very simple. So I have shown only three dimension table in real life. There could be four, five, six, seven dimension tables. So usually in the middle, you have a fact table and on the side you have dimension table and the shape of this relationship looks like star. That's why it's called star schema. Folks, it's as simple as that. It, it's not a rocket science to be honest. So just to summarize in star schema in the middle, you have fact table on the side, you have dimension table and dimension table represents extra attribute or extra information about that sales table. Usually the information in sales table or the fact table will change on a continuous basis versus in dimension table, the information doesn't change that much. For example, you have a grocery store, you have a set of products. You might not add products that often. So this product table will not change with same frequency as the fact table, which is your sales table. So that's star schema. Now you might have a scenario where you have a dimension table, let's say customer table, but that customer table can have few other dimension table. 
So you're just extending that concept. So in the middle, you have fact table. On the side, you have dimension table. And for one or more of your dimension table, you can have further dimension tables. And if you just visualize the shape of this, it looks like Snowflake. That's why it's called Snowflake Schema. As simple as that. This process of establishing relationship between the tables is called data modeling. Data modeling is something you can do in a BI tool such as Power BI Tableau. In my Power BI course, by the way, on CodeBasics.io, uh, I have done a proper modeling of a database which contains one and a half million records. It's, it's this industry style uh, project based course that I have on CodeBasics.io. And there I did this data modeling where I had multiple fact table in the middle. So you can have multiple fact tables in the middle. That's fine. But on this side, you have all these dimension date, dimension product, dimension customer, all these dimension. And then see dimension customer has one more dimension, which is market. So let's say there is a customer such as Chroma Electronic in India, or let's say Staples in US, that will have further dimension, which is a market. So market means country. So is, is it US, is it India? Region means European Union, EU or Asia Pacific and so on. And there could be subzone as well. So this schema is a snowflake schema. All right, so I hope uh, uh, you got some understanding of what is star schema and what is snowflake schema. We also covered fact table and dimension. Fact table is in the middle. Dimension tables are on the side. And we also covered a little bit about database normalization as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that they can also understand these jargons in a easier manner.